What's up guys, this is Timoteus. In this video, I'll talk about the basic things you need to know if you want to read a Roman votive altar in a museum, or if you want to design one yourself. Roman votive altars were usually dedicated to a deity by a supplicant as the conclusion of a kind of religious contract. In the first stage of this agreement, the supplicant would ask a particular deity for help or protection for the duration of a certain venture, for example a journey to a distant place or a battle against a fierce enemy. In return, the supplicant vowed to dedicate an altar to this deity. If the requested help or protection was received, the supplicant would fulfill his part of the deal and commission an altar with an inscription which typically contained the following information. Firstly, the name of one or more deities. Secondly, the name of the supplicant. And thirdly, one of the typical formulaic phrases. The names of the gods are put in the dative case. For instance, Mercurius would become Mercurio, meaning to Mercury. Diana would become Dianae and Hercules, Herculi. Sometimes the god or the goddess is added. So, Deo Mercurio to the god Mercury, Dei Dianae to the goddess Diana, Deo Hercules to the god Hercules. Some deities are often described as the venerable, the sacred, the invincible, or the best and greatest. I'll show you an example of the last one in a minute. On to the second part then. The name of the supplicant is simply in the nominative case. Note that the name is often abbreviated drastically to save space or keep the cost of the commissioned altar down. For example, the name Publius Aulius could be abbreviated as shown here. Sometimes the place of origin, military rank, profession, or even father's name were also included. Was it to make sure the gods knew who exactly dedicated the altar? Or maybe they were like, if I'm gonna pay this much for an altar, I want the other temple visitors to know it was me who paid for it, so I can show them how rich and powerful I am. Or maybe a little bit of both. And then for the last part of the inscription, the most common ending would be VSLM, which stands for Votum Solvit Libens Merito. In English, this means, has fulfilled his vow willingly and deservedly. The shorter alternatives, SL, LM, and VSL, are also sometimes used. Let's have a look at an example of a real votive altar. This one is dedicated to Lady Fortune and has a very simple inscription. Fortunae, Tacius Sabinus, Votum solvit libens merito, or Tacius Sabinus has fulfilled his vow to Fortuna willingly and deservedly. Altars dedicated to Jupiter Optimus Maximus are probably the most common of all. They can be recognized by the abbreviation IOM. In Latin, this one reads Jovi Optimo Maximo, Marcus Sabinius Candidus, Votum solvit libens merito. So that translates to Marcus Sabinius Candidus has fulfilled his vow to Jupiter, the best and greatest, willingly and deservedly. This is an altar to Hercules I commissioned myself. It was made by an artist from the UK called Simon Jameson. You can order your own altar with personalized inscription over at his website. I think he did a great job and there's not too many people out there who sell Roman votive altars. So I'll put the link in the description below. Simon based the shape of this votive altar on an original that was found along Hadrian's Wall and can currently be seen at Chester's Roman Fort Museum. If I'm not mistaken, the original has an inscription saying it was dedicated to the goddess Minerva. I chose to have the letters painted red as there have been instances where traces of red pigmentation were found on votive altars but the red paint you can see on most altars in museums is actually restored to increase legibility. 
Details apart from the lettering may have been painted as well. The shallow depression at the top is used for burning offerings like incense. If you would like to know how to put the name of your favorite Roman deity in the dative case, I posted a list on my blog with some of the most common ones. On there you'll also be able to find the references as well as some more formulaic phrases. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please let me know by hitting the like button, commenting or subscribing. This was Timoteus, thanks for watching.